In this diagram, we will draw the posterior and anterior spinocerebellar pathways. First draw cross sections at the level of the lumbar spinal cord and cervical spinal cord. We will separate the spinocerebellar pathways into anterior and posterior systems, drawing first their lower body inputs and secondly their upper body inputs. In the intermediate zone of the lumbar cord, label the dorsal nucleus of Clark. It spans from L2 up to T1. Then along the posterior lateral wall of the spinal cord, label the posterior spinocerebellar tract. Now show that inputs from the lower body pass into the posterior column and travel up to the L2 level where they synapse in the dorsal nucleus of Clark. Then show them pass within the posterior spinocerebellar tract up the length of the spinal cord through the ipsilateral inferior cerebellar peduncle to enter the cerebellum. Next show that the anterior spinocerebellar tract originates in spinal border cells in the lateral wall of the anterior horn of the lumbar spinal cord. These spinal cells lie at the L3 to L5 levels. Label the anterior spinocerebellar tract along the anterior lateral wall of the spinal cord. Unlike the posterior spinocerebellar tract, which remains uncrossed throughout its course, the anterior spinocerebellar tract crosses within the spinal cord and then again back within the cerebellum to maintain an ipsilateral relationship with the periphery. Show the fibers of the anterior spinocerebellar tract cross within the ventral commissure of the spinal cord and travel up to the superior cerebellar peduncle where they pass back within the cerebellum to their site of origin. Generally, the inferior and middle cerebellar peduncles are the inflow pathways to the cerebellum and the superior cerebellar peduncle is the outflow pathway for fibers from the cerebellum. The anterior spinocerebellar pathway is the major exception. Now show upper body fibers from T4 to C2 enter the posterior columns of the cervical spinal cord and form their primary synapse in the lateral cuneate nucleus of the medulla where they become the cuneocerebellar tract. The cuneocerebellar tract is the upper body equivalent of the posterior spinocerebellar tract. Show the cuneocerebellar fibers pass through the ipsilateral inferior cerebellar peduncle to enter the cerebellum. For our last pathway, first label lamina 7 intermediate zone cervical neurons. Then draw the rostral spinocerebellar tract along the anterior wall of the cord. Just as the cuneocerebellar tract is the upper body equivalent of the posterior spinocerebellar pathway, the rostral spinocerebellar tract is the upper body equivalent of the anterior spinocerebellar pathway. However, there are several differences between the anterior and rostral pathways. The lower body origins of the anterior tract are in the anterior horn of the spinal cord, but the origins of the rostral tract are in the intermediate horn. Also, show the rostral fibers travel up the ipsilateral anterior spinal cord to pass through the inferior cerebellar peduncle to enter the cerebellum. They do not cross sides of the body as fibers from their lower body counterpart do, and they enter the cerebellum through the inferior rather than the superior cerebellar peduncle. This concludes our drawing of the fiber pathways of the spinocerebellar systems.